Here we'll figure out some rules for dividing negative numbers. But first, let's multiply a few negatives. What's 6 times negative 5? And negative 4 times negative 3? If you're not sure, click down here to review. Excellent! Multiplying a positive and a negative gives you a negative, so 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. And multiplying two negatives together gives you a positive, so negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. Next, let's try some division. What's 20 divided by 4? Again, click down here if you'd like to review. Right, 20 divided by 4 equals 5. This is correct because 5 is the number you can multiply by 4 to get 20. Next, let's try dividing a negative number. What's negative 14 divided by 2? In other words, what number can you multiply by 2 to get negative 14? Nicely done. Negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. You know this is correct because it's the same thing as saying that 2 times negative 7 equals negative 14. Next, what happens if the number we're dividing by is negative? So what's 14 divided by negative 2? In other words, what number can you multiply by negative 2 to get positive 14? Exactly, this is also negative 7. And that's because negative 2 times negative 7 equals positive 14. So these two expressions are equal. It doesn't matter if the minus sign is in the first number or the second number. So instead of thinking of this as negative 14 over 2 or 14 over negative 2, you can just think of this as negative 14 over 2. So all three of these expressions equal negative 7. And the general rule here is that you can pull the minus sign out of a quotient. Negative 14 over 2 and 14 over negative 2 are both just negative 14 over 2. Try another example. Which three of these expressions down here are equal to each other? Precisely, these three expressions are all equal. It doesn't matter if the minus sign is in front of the quotient, in the first number, or in the second number. These all equal negative 6. Next, try dividing one negative number by another negative number. What's negative 24 divided by negative 8? In other words, what can you multiply by negative 8 to get negative 24? Right. Negative 24 divided by negative 8 equals positive 3. In other words, negative 8 times 3 equals negative 24. In general, when you divide one negative by another negative, the minus signs cancel out. So negative 24 over negative 8 is the same as 24 over 8 without the minus signs. So keep an eye out for minus signs that you can cancel. Next, try dividing a few more negative numbers. Excellent work! So all these minus signs cancel, and here are the answers you found. So just to review, you can pull minus signs out of quotients. In other words, to evaluate 14 divided by negative 2, you can pull out the minus sign, so it's negative 14 over 2. And minus signs cancel out. So if you're dividing one negative number by another negative number, then you can cancel the minus signs and divide the positive numbers instead. Here we'll look at the distributive law with negative numbers. So first, suppose you have 4 times 8 plus 3, with the 8 plus 3 in parentheses. Distributing the 4 onto the addition gives you which of these expressions? Exactly, 4 times 8 plus 3 equals 4 times 8 plus 4 times 3. Next, suppose the number outside the parentheses is negative 4. Well, we can still use the distributive law, but now we're distributing a negative number onto the addition inside the parentheses. So which of these expressions do you get from the distributive law? Exactly, distributing the negative 4 gives you negative 4 times 8 plus negative 4 times 3. 
Next, try evaluating these two expressions to make sure that they really are equivalent. Nicely done! In this top expression, you should first evaluate what's inside the parentheses, which is 8 plus 3, or 11. Negative 4 times 11 equals negative 44. And in the bottom expression, negative 4 times 8 is negative 32, and negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Adding negative 32 and negative 12 again gives you negative 44. So great! You just confirmed that the distributive law still works even when you're distributing a negative number. Now notice that you're adding a negative over here which is the same as subtracting. So by distributing a negative number we turned this addition into subtraction. Very interesting. Let's see what happens when we distribute a negative number onto subtraction. For example, Suppose you have negative 2 times 7 minus 4 in parentheses. We can distribute the negative 2 giving us negative 2 times 7. And then we're subtracting and the second term is negative 2 times 4. Again, evaluate these two expressions to make sure they're the same. And be careful when subtracting the negative over here. Click down here if you'd like to review how to do this. Excellent! So 7 minus 4 is 3 and negative 2 times 3 equals negative 6. Down here, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14 and negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Now, subtracting negative 8 is the same as adding positive 8. And sure enough, negative 14 plus 8 equals negative 6. So as you found, subtracting this negative is the same as adding a positive. And so by distributing a negative number, we turned subtraction into addition. So what's going on here? Well, when you distribute a negative number, you're flipping the plus and minus signs. Any addition inside the parentheses becomes subtraction. And any subtraction, like the 7 minus 4 over here, becomes addition outside the parentheses. Try using this fact in another example. Suppose you have negative 5 times 4 minus 1 plus 8 inside parentheses. If you distribute the negative 5, you'll get three terms that look like these, with plus or minus signs between them. So go ahead and choose the correct signs. Nicely done! Distributing negative 5 onto this first term gives you negative 5 times 4. Next, distributing negative 5 onto this subtraction turns it into addition, so you get plus 5 times 1. And this addition over here becomes subtraction, so we have minus 5 times 8. Let's look at another example, where we have a minus sign by itself outside the parentheses. Having a minus sign like this means you should evaluate what's inside the parentheses and then flip the sign. You can also think of it as multiplying by negative 1. So if you distribute this minus sign, or negative 1, you'll get three terms. Again, go ahead and choose the correct signs between these terms. Very well done! Distributing the minus sign onto 9, you get negative 9. Then this subtraction becomes addition, and you have plus 3 and this subtraction also becomes addition, giving you plus 4. Does that really work? Go ahead and make sure these two expressions are equivalent. Right, 9 minus 3 minus 4 gives you 2, and then you're making it negative, so you have negative 2. And down here, negative 9 plus 3 plus 4 also gives you negative 2. Next, let's look at this expression, negative, negative 4. Yikes! What's going on here? Well, keep in mind that having a minus sign is the same as multiplying by negative 1. So you can distribute this minus sign onto the negative 4. When you do that, what do you get? Exactly! This equals positive 4. So the negative of a negative is a positive, just like multiplying two negatives together gives you a positive. 
So for your final challenge, suppose you have negative 5, and then you take the negative of that, and then you take the negative of that. So you have negative, negative, negative 5. Can you simplify this expression? First off, can you evaluate this expression? 6 times 1 plus 4, where 1 plus 4 is in parentheses. If not, click here to review order of operations. Right. First you evaluate the 1 plus 4 in parentheses to get 5, and then multiplying by 6 gives you 30. Next, take a look at this expression. Now there are two sets of parentheses, this inner pair and this outer pair. When you have more than one pair of parentheses like this, you should always evaluate the innermost pair first and then work your way out. So in this example, we'll start with the inner parentheses. 3 minus 1 is 2. And now we'll evaluate the next set of parentheses. 5 times 2 is 10, minus 6 is 4. And 7 times 4 is 28. So that's our answer. Next, take a look at this expression. Before evaluating it, can you identify which two parentheses make up the inner pair? <coughs> Nicely done. So here's the inner pair of parentheses. Okay, so now go ahead and evaluate this expression. Great, so this equals 11. Now having all these parentheses here and keeping track of which ones are the inner pair and outer pair, it can all get confusing. So you'll often see the outer parentheses written as brackets or braces. So with this expression, you might see this outer pair of parentheses replaced by what are called brackets, like this, or by what are called braces, or curly braces, like this. Next, try evaluating this expression, which you might notice has a pair of brackets. Excellent! So this first part equals 14, and this second part equals 10. 14 minus 10 is 4, which is the correct answer. Okay, last question, just for some extra practice. Try evaluating this expression. And remember, this dot over here is another way to write the multiplication symbol. Here we'll explore averages of numbers. Suppose you look up the weather for the coming week and the temperatures are expected to be 76, 70, 66, 75, and 81 degrees Fahrenheit. You can think of the average as being the typical number out of this group, somewhere in the middle of all these temperatures. So what would you say is the average temperature for this week? Don't worry, we'll say more precisely what average means in a little bit. Great, so let's take a closer look at averages. Suppose you have five numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, which we can represent as stacks. So this stack on the left is made up of two blocks, and this stack on the right is made up of 10 blocks. What would you say is the average of these five numbers, or the average height of these stacks? Exactly, the average of these numbers is 6. Here's one way to think about it. You've got five stacks of blocks here. If we rearrange these stacks so they all have the same height, what would that height be? Well, we can move these four blocks over here, and we can also move these two blocks over here. And now all four stacks have the same height, six. So we've just proven that the average height of those five numbers is six. Now it's time for you to find averages of your own numbers. You can drag the tops of these bars up and down to make these numbers bigger and smaller. And you can add new bars by clicking the plus sign, and you can remove bars by clicking the red X's. Then, you can click this button here to find the average, and the bars will rearrange so they all have the same height. Try using this interactive to find the average of 3, 2, 7, and 8. Nicely done! As you can see, 2, 3, 7, and 8 average to 5. Next, try finding the average of 6 numbers, 4, 9, 7, 8, 9, and 5. 
If you get stuck, feel free to ask for a hint. Let's see if we can come up with a general strategy for calculating the average of a group of numbers. Suppose we have four numbers, 1, 2, 2, and 7, and here are their corresponding stacks of blocks. If we want to redistribute these blocks so all the stacks have the same height, first we can add the four numbers together, meaning we can combine the stacks, giving us a height of 12. Then, to make four equal stacks, we can divide this sum into four equal groups. And so the average of these four numbers turns out to be 3. So which of these expressions over here do you think correctly gives you the average of these four numbers? Exactly. So to find the average of a group of numbers, you can add them all up and then divide by how many numbers you have, which was 4 in this example. So the general strategy for finding the average is to first add up all the numbers and then divide that sum by how many numbers you're averaging. Try another example and calculate the average of these six numbers, 4, 2, 8, 9, 4, and 3. Nicely done. So you can add up these numbers, and there are six of them, so we want to divide this sum by six. This adds up to 30, and 30 divided by six is five. Next, let's return to our weekly temperatures from the beginning. What's the average of these five numbers? And be sure to include any decimals you get in your answer. Excellent! So this average is 73.6 degrees. When calculating averages, you'll often see decimals in your answer because you're dividing. Now this method of finding averages also works when your numbers are negative. So try finding the average of negative 7, 5, negative 9, and 4. And again, be sure to include any decimals in your answer. Or click down here to review adding positive and negative numbers. Great, so you can add up these numbers and divide by 4. This sum turns out to be negative 7, and negative 7 divided by 4 equals negative 1.75. So with these two steps, you can find the average of any group of numbers. Finally, let's try a few challenging questions involving averages. Say I have 7 numbers, and I tell you their average is 4. Can you figure out what the sum of these 7 numbers must be? What value do you get if you add all of them up? Feel free to ask for a hint if you need one. Excellent! So whatever the sum of these numbers might be, dividing that sum by 7 will give you the average, which you're told is 4. So what number divided by 7 equals 4? The answer is 28. Let's try another problem. Say I have 5 numbers, and I tell you their average is 6. And I also tell you that four of the numbers are 0, 1, 3, and 7. Can you figure out what the final number must be? Excellent! In order for five numbers to have an average of 6, that means they must add up to 30. Now the first four numbers, 0, 1, 3, and 7, together add up to 11. So if the first four numbers add up to 11, and all five add up to 30, that means the last number must be 19. So nicely done.